Okay, welcome and thanks to everyone for joining this OER course walkthrough for English, specifically developmental English and English composition. The fifth in a series running all this week that's really designed to walk VCCS faculty and staff through some of Lumen's most frequently requested OER courses. My name, as I mentioned, is Elizabeth Shonigan. I'm the Director of Teaching and Learning with Lumen. And then today, we're joined also by Lumen's VP of Strategy and Communications, Julie Curtis. And Julie's going to be walking us through these courses in Blackboard, as well as talking more about some other courses in English in those areas that are really ready and very easy for VCCS faculty to adopt. So thanks, Julie, for being here today. And also a quick thanks to VCCS for helping us get these webinars up and rolling. So we are recording the session, but feel free to you know, either save questions and comments for the end or just go ahead and drop them in the chat. And then we'll address them as we move through the presentation. And thanks to uh, everyone for being here today as well. So before I introduce and pass the ball over to Julie, let me first provide some quick context on why we're here and why open educational resources matter. So you know, things like cost savings, day one access, and then the ability for faculty members to control the content in terms of being able to edit it, keep it, freely share it, those are just a few reasons to choose OER. And we now know that effectively delivered open materials, they've also been shown to improve student learning outcomes. And for the sake of time, we won't dive too deeply into that, but if you're interested to learn more and see some of the research behind some of the more recent OER efforts, we put a lot of that on lumenlearning.com under the Why We're Effective tab, so you can check it out there. But suffice it to say, OER is a decision that's fully in the control of the faculty member. And when you choose to use OER, you are making a direct impact on issues that students suffer from in terms of affordability, access, and you're improving student success. So frankly, it's pretty empowering. VCCS has partnered with Lumen Learning to help ease this transition to OER. So our job is to curate the highest quality content delivered through a secure platform that integrates with Blackboard and with your Blackboard Grade Center, and then to help faculty be successful by providing course design support, implementation support, and then ongoing support as you're using OER in your class. And that's really part of my role as Director of Teaching and Learning. So my background is in ed tech and instructional design, and I'm really thankful for the opportunity to work with BCCS and, and all the colleagues here. As you may be aware, VCCS faculty can adopt any of the three OAR course types you see here. Candela, Waymaker, which we'll be taking a closer look at today, and then OWN, the Open Math Solution. Each of these provides options in a number of course areas, and at the end we'll make sure to go through how you can get your own copies ready to go right in Blackboard to use this fall and beyond. So I want to take just a few seconds to briefly explain what each of these course types entails and then I'll introduce Julie for a deep dive into English. Lumen's Candela courses are what most VCCS faculty will be familiar with. These courses are a great starting point for when you just need a basic e-text replacement and some faculty resources from quiz banks and PowerPoints and assessments to other instructional content. And again, because all the content here is openly licensed, you as the faculty member have complete freedom to edit it, mix it, keep it, reuse it, and really distribute it as you see fit. OM is Lumen's online homework manager. It's a math geared solution that you'll find um, very similar in look, feel, and performance to the systems that are provided by major publishers today. So OM actually grew from the need for a reliable, secure, more enterprise level system based on the open solution My Open Math, which Lumen continues to maintain in collaboration with David Lipman, the author. So inside each of the 12 courses currently curated by Lumen, you'll find an e-text, algorithmically driven practice problems, videos, assessments, pretty much all the kind of content that you would expect from a full solution. And of course, you know, if you're using OM as a faculty member, you also benefit from the support, reliability, and accessibility um, in collaboration with Lumen and our support. So you can learn more about OM at ohm.lumenlearning.com. Now to what we're here for today, Lumen's Waymaker courses. So these courses take the OER content and Candela to the next level by layering in a personalized learning approach and then some really cool faculty messaging tools. And these tools are really geared to help you build the faculty-student connection. And they're not only to help you identify and reach out to your struggling students, but they're also there to help you reward the ones that are working hard to be successful in your course. 
So we'll be taking a look at all of that today. And uh, as I mentioned, our VP of Strategy and Communications, Julie Curtis, has been kind enough to join us to walk us through these. So Julie's been in higher ed tech for more than a decade, and she's led initiatives around strategic collaboration, thought leadership, new product introduction, marketing research, and strategic communications. So her master's is in public policy from Harvard University's Kennedy School of Government. And then she did her undergraduate work in English, in English at Brigham Young. So Julie, thank you for your leadership. It's really been instrumental in developing the, the course catalog and these and many other areas. And really appreciate your being here today to walk us through English. So I'll pass it over to you. All right, thank you so much, Elizabeth. Um, you know, it's interesting, my very first uh, few days working at Lumen Learning when I joined the company uh, full time. Uh, we were doing a lot of work on English courses, and so one of my first uh, first tasks to help me get acquainted with the products and the courses and the things that we're doing was to do just some kind of review and copy editing and proofreading for. Um, a couple of the English courses that we were getting out, and I think it was for VCCS folks at the time. And so um, having been once upon a time an English major, this area is close to my heart, and it's been really exciting to see the direction that we've taken the development of these courses. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll dive right into the courses and take a look at those. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, provide kind of a helpful explanation about what's happening in the design of these courses and, and the learning outcomes behind them. So we developed a sequence of three uh, courses that, that start with basic reading and writing, move to kind of a level two developmental uh, 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 course uh, around introduction to college composition, so once students have that foundation in the basics. And then um, moving into level three, which is the, the introductory college level composition course. Now, there are supplements that are available uh, for at, at all levels. The first is a reader anthology. We find as, in, as instructors are teaching with these courses, sometimes they have their own readings that they like to direct students to that are tied to the assignments and the prompts that they build into their courses. Um, we also had a lot of requests for a fully anthology, and so that's what we've provided here. Um, and, and so uh, instructors have the option to use that reader anthology that we provide or to use your own resources um, that you've selected. We also developed in conjunction with these courses a writing style guide. Now, the information in that style guide is actually embedded in the, courses, in the course content um, in each of the courses at the appropriate level of the course. And so you don't really need a separate style guide associated with those. But again, we've had some instructors that have been teaching with this that are used to teaching with a separate, um, or at least having available for their students a separate style guide type re excuse me, resource, like Strunk and White, for example. Um, and so uh, at, at, uh, the, at the instructor's request, we're happy to include that resource as one of the supplemental tools that can be provided in any of these courses. Um, the, we've drawn from a lot of different OER source texts for each of these courses. Um, as we go into them, you'll see that the courses themselves are, are, uh, have been curated and uh, that sort of the editing and design around them, so they feel like complete cohesive uh, courses. Um, but underneath, uh, if you check the attributions, we're pulling the best available OER material from a variety of sources. And you can see that the primary uh, ones that we've used are listed there in the slide. Um, uh, there are others as well, and they're all noted, of course. Let's see. Here we go. So the, the learning outcomes for each of these courses uh, we design the courses to have a consistent set of underlying learning outcomes um, across each level, each of the three levels of the course. Um, at the level one course, the learning objective is really to identify. It's at that, that lower bloom level, but helping make sure that students can identify these different elements. Um, and then also in each course, there's the, the basic fundamental content around reading, writing, and research. Um, and so this slide, and we can, we'll provide these after the fact, um, but it, it lists each of the, the learning outcome levels. 
um, in each of these areas. The level two uh, developmental writing course is focused on helping students achieve uh, the ability to analyze each of these different areas. And then level three uh, moves up to the evaluation level. So really each one, um, especially when they're used in a sequence, can provide some nice consistency for uh, the student as well as the instructor um, in terms of the, the, the clarity around the structure, but also the clarity around the objectives and, and building on that prior foundation that students are, are developing over time. So these three, reading, writing, and research, are really the, the core modules that are going to be the bread and butter of each of these courses. And then um, we also have grammar and success skills. Uh, we find a lot of times um, instructors may uh, opt not to use these modules, or they may use them in some, a little bit more selectively or diagnostically. Um, but, uh, we, but we also find that it's not uncommon for basic, um, you know, kind of study skills. Uh, some of those kinds of things can be helpful to incorporate into these courses. These are very often courses, of course, that um, new to the college environment students or coming back to the college environment students can benefit from. Um, and then, of course, grammar uh, is often a part of the, you know, standard uh, um, writing courses. There are some institutions that have sort of a separate, uh, often a non-credit grammar type course. We find it's helpful to include, and our instructors typically really like uh, to have that. It provides a nice, concise area for students to learn and reinforce those skills, um, and can sometimes take the uh, take some of the effort off of having to. Um, uh, teach a lot of that in class or take a lot of time, it's easy to kind of direct students to the areas where they might need some help or some reinforcement based on what they already know. So with that foundation around the, um, what, what's happening in the learning outcomes themselves, we'll go ahead and take a look at the course content. So I'm going to, uh, I want to stop sharing the slides and move over to sharing my screen and thank you. All right. So what we're looking at now is the, the level one basic reading and writing course. Um, I want to uh, highlight a couple of things here. So uh, it's probably familiar to you is the Blackboard environment when you teach with a Lumen course. Um, we import all of the course materials directly into your Blackboard environment. And so students and faculty members access all of the content here. It comes in in a set of modules. And so you'll see these modules have that same, uh, same set of topics that we were talking about earlier. Um, this course happens to be a Waymaker course. Um, and Elizabeth mentioned that we, we have these different packaging around our courses. So the, the Waymaker courses come with a really nice set of personalized learning tools um, that students use when they're working through the content. Uh, so this being a Waymaker course, there's a, uh, there's a set of faculty resources. This is where you can find the uh, set of uh, resources that are here. Uh, this is where there's sets of more detailed learning outcomes, those types of things. Um, for the purposes of our session today, though, we'll go ahead and dive right into the course content. So you can see there's uh, success skills, reading, writing process, research, and grammar. The order that these appear in is, are, is something that you can adjust. It's easy for you to hide or even delete uh, any of the sections that you don't want to use. Um, as we click into any of these sections, I'll, I'll go into the writing process for now. So as we come into the, the content, um, what you'll see is a set of, uh, so in a Waymaker course, all of the content is here behind the learning plan. We'll go in there in just a minute. Um, but also the courses are delivered with sample assignments. Um, and you can see those come in as Blackboard assignments. Um, you have the ability to go in and take a look at all of these and decide, you know, do I want to use all of these? Do I want to use part of these? How might they want to be mapped across uh, my course and my syllabus? If you have uh, your own writing prompts or your own assignments, it's easy to remove these and, and add those back in or just copy them in um, from another 
another version of the course that you've been teaching. Um, one other note, all of the assignments, um, they, they have writing prompts that are here. There is nothing that's built into the content itself that, uh, that necessitates using this particular set of writing prompts or, or uh, materials. And so um, you can use the content itself and then and have the, the assignments be associated with your own prompts, um, your own uh, way of doing the activities, um, and, and know that the, the the instructional content itself will, will work with whatever set of assignments that you're putting in there associated with this particular set of learning outcomes. So each of these courses has a common structure. One other thing I'll note um, is as we go into this, um, uh, here again we have that nice consistency between each level of the course. So we're looking at basic reading and writing here. Um, we can take a quick look at the, at the level two and the level three courses in a moment so you can see kind of what the difference is. But each of them has a common module structure. So whether it's writing process or grammar or something else, there's an initial uh, uh, a couple of units that are, you know, why does this matter? And we'll just go ahead and click in. Each of these is a little tile. If you click on it, then it opens up the learning activities that are underneath. And so here, um, this talks about the writing process. Um, it introduces why is this process important. There's nice graphics associated with it that are that are unique to this course. Um, and then in Waymaker courses, we also ask students to go through a very quick ungraded pretest that's built in. And so again, this is just part of that natural introducing the, the subject flow that students will go through. Um, very briefly, I'll click through this and, and um, then we can take a look. Uh, you have the ability to go ahead and, and adjust or customize any of the questions that are here. The nice thing about um, doing this, whoops, apparently I left a question blank. There we go. Um, it, when students have the opportunity to do this pretest, it lets them preview the material, it shows them their score, um, they're able to see what, what are the questions and, and how did they do. Um, and then they can go back to the study plan. And this is a demo course, and I'm looking at the faculty member view. So I'm going to quickly uh, put in some test data to show you uh, what it would look like, like for a student. So once they've come through the pretest, then they're able to um, go directly into the content. And they have some nice signposting to um, hone in on for them what are the key areas where we absolutely know that they need work. Um, in a Candela course, you have the same content there. It doesn't have a pre-built uh, uh, pr uh, pretest. It doesn't have this little signposting. But the content that we'll go into and look at now is going to be identical between a Waymaker course and a, and a Candela course. So once um, the student then comes into the, the meat of the content, they have the different topics that are here. And then the learning activities are, are um, underneath the topic. So we can take a look. Let's go in. Um, and again, you can get a flavor for the content that's here. Um, there's, uh, so this is looking at choosing a topic, different skills around that. And then a, step, uh, a set of um, additional activities and readings. And um, there's video that's incorporated here um, to walk students through the material. Um, so uh, this gives you a nice flavor of uh, what the content is like. Hold on, I need to move my Adobe button so it doesn't cover my next button. Um, so I'm going to go back into the study plan. Oh, wait, before I do that, um, so as you go through the material at the bottom of every page and every licenses and attributions, um, you'll be able to see the original sources of the material from, for each page. And so that's a nice, handy way for you or for your students to, to check back or, or to um, you know, get the sourcing on the material. Another really nice thing about um, both our Candela and Waymaker courses is they have these formative self-checks that are built into the course. Um, so they don't have, uh, these are not tied to the gradebook, but they periodically will come up as a student finishes the material in this example on topic selection. Um, then they have the opportunity to do a little quiz to check are they getting the material. Um, and I'm just going to go through these very quickly. Uh, this, again, is something that in Waymaker courses, it's very simple for you to go in and edit or adjust or even add to the number of formative questions that are here. Um, and so the student can use this just to check their understanding and make sure that they're learning the material um, before they move on. 
so a lot of the goal of these courses is to give students a lot of opportunity to practice and to, um, to sort of dig in. One of the things that I wanted to do is illustrate the differences between what's happening at the level one versus level two or level three of the course. And so to do that, that one of the easiest places or easiest ways to do that is to go into our, into our grammar module. So I'm going to back out into the grammar module. And we'll take a look at the same module in level one, level two, and level three. And that'll give you a good flavor for how we've been, we're sort of scaffolding the material in each of the courses and, and how they can build on each other. Of course, they can each be used independently. Um, but uh, this can give you a good sense of, of sort of what, where we're gearing each level of the, of the course at. So we're going to go into, this again is the grammar module, we're going to go in and look at, um, we'll look at pronouns, I guess. So as we go into this section, uh, so we'll, um, again, this is the first level of the level one. And so we're looking at um, what's happening with pronouns. So we have some instructional material, um, a lot of focus around identifying these different pieces. And so here we're, we're introducing the student to what is a pronoun. Um, there's some good definitional information here. Um, it starts with very simple, uh, you know, it's him, her, is, she, that type of thing. Um, one of the things we've also built into these courses is some, um, some little practice activities that allow the student to, uh, to see here's a little question. Um, they can go through it, and then they can click to show the answer to see if they were getting it right. Um, so that's a, that's a nice, uh, simple way to do that. Again, we've got um, video and, uh, and, you know, looking at what are some of the different, uh, the rules and things that we'll need to do. Um, and so uh, and you can also see sort of the, the level. This is, it, it's um, working at a very foundational level. Um, now we'll jump over into the, hold on. Here, this is my next level, yes. So here we'll go into grammar again. This is level two. Um, and here we're looking beyond just the identification. So here we want students not just to know, okay, what is a pronoun, but also to do some analysis around uh, usage and, and whether it's going to be, um, you know, how, how is the usage happening. So here you'll notice in level two, we have nouns and pronouns that are grouped together. So in level one, um, understanding where students are coming from, uh, let me go back to the study plan quickly. Um, there's, a, there's a separate little unit on uh, nouns and pronouns separately. So as we move into level two, um, we, we, students are demonstrating that they have some foundation as they're going into there. Um, and so as we go into pronouns, there's, uh, there's still going to be some instructional content. Um, but here the focus, there, there is, you know, reminder, here's what pronouns are. Um, but then we're moving more quickly into personal pronouns. We're moving, um, you know, we have, again, some of the same things, like this is the same video that we saw before. Um, and, uh, but, but focusing um, as, we, as we move into the material, focusing more on some analysis exercises, not simply the, uh, the um, you know, the, the identification. Uh, and then here also the practice um, adjusts a little bit. Um, so uh, we're asking students not just to identify something, but also here to explain why or why not is each of the pronouns being used correctly. So it's helping making sure our students getting some understanding of the whys behind it, not just is it correct or is it not correct, and identifying where it is or isn't happening. And here again, this is a show answer, so you can uh, have the student um, they will uh, add in their response, um, and then they're able to check that and say, am I, am I interpreting things the way, am I getting the, the, the information the way, that, the way that I'm supposed to be getting the information? Um, again, this is um, so, sort of formative practice. There's not um, in the content itself uh, a discipline to force the students to do these interactive activities. Although it's, it's also fairly simple for these type of interactives for an instructor to turn this into a graded activity or, or something similar to that if you wanted to, um, to uh, have the, the motivation and the incentive for students to participate in these type of activities. Um, now we'll go ahead and look at the level three. And, and here again, we can, 
look at the the comparison between how the how the material uh, builds on each other and in the um, I guess the connection between the three different levels. Um, as we go here into the study plan for grammar, again, in level three, again, this is the college composition level. And so nouns and pronouns are together. Um, we, if we go into the pronoun area, um, here we're going to see uh, even more concise uh, instructional material. So here we're assuming the student has a foundation. This is really just a quick refresher. Um, and then diving right into practice, uh, you know, are you identifying uh, which, um, not just where, what is it, but what are the antecedents as well as the pronouns, so putting that additional level of, of grammar and connection together. Um, moving quickly into different types of pronouns. Um, and then here again, the interactive is, is moving into more of the, uh, the evaluation level. So it's asking students to, um, uh, to uh, evaluate is usage happening correctly and and also when would you use one versus the other um, looking at are there examples when you're you're making some of those kinds of choices at a little more complex level and then providing some um, some some of again of these practice and show answers uh, that, that let the student apply and then double check that they're they're having proper usage and a proper understanding of what's going on um, so with each of these courses, uh, this hopefully gives you a good flavor of as we move from the most foundational level into the higher uh, levels of understanding, um, what we're doing with the learning outcomes, the type of content and the type of practice that we're trying to give students. So they're developing, um, again, not just that basic understanding, but as they move into the college level, uh, that more nuanced understanding, the ability to evaluate what's happening, know why they're doing things, and then apply that understanding, obviously, in the writing that they're doing. Um, the other thing that I will point to here, I'm going to back out into the, the modules themselves. Let's see. We go out of the study plan, um, and we'll go into the main list. Um, so if you're, um, if you're going into uh, and, and applying each of these courses, you have the ability to, um, to decide which of these modules you want to use. Um, in any of these areas, you're able to uh, move, this, move the areas around if you want to do. I, I think in a writing course, it's pretty basic to do a critical reading chapter, um, then the writing process, and then apply the research. Um, you know, some instructors might do a, a grammar unit up front, others might use that sort of diagnostically as they go. All of those things are part of what you can do as you're customizing and fitting the course to how you want to teach it. Um, and then we also deliver each Waymaker course with sets of, uh, of sample assignments that you can use. Um, these come into your course as part of the, the unit, so you'll have the content as well as the assignments. Um, and then um, all of the assignments themselves are, are uh, openly licensed as well. And so you can look at these and decide, do I want to use these? Do I don't want to adapt these? Or do I want to just use my own? That provides a lot of control and um, flexibility for what you want to do and what, what's the right level of work, um, what's the right set of things that you want to, to uh, put together for your students. Um, so with that, I think that's what I, the main pieces that I wanted to cover with these courses. Um, Elizabeth, is there anything else you'd like me to cover before I hand things back to you? Yeah, thanks, Julie. While you were there, actually, if you wouldn't mind going through those uh, faculty tools, or I can uh, sure. bring it up over on my, my side here, because the messaging no. tools are one of the neatest parts about, you know, using Waymaker, these uh, messaging pieces. Uh, yep, yeah, absolutely. I'm right here, so I can go ahead and do that. Um, so I, the, the cool thing about Waymaker for students is that personalized study plan that I showed you a minute ago. Um, the thing that faculty members um, fall in love with typically is, is here in the faculty resources module in the, the Waymaker faculty tools area. So this is a set of tools that um, faculty members tell us they save time and they simplify uh, things for them in terms of understanding who's struggling and um, in taking the time for individualized outreach to build connections with our students and to really know what's going on. 
Um, so behind the faculty tools, there's really two types of things that are happening here. One is a set of recommendations, and two is a set of messages that you're able to set up and use as you see fit with your students. Um, and then the, the system itself is sort of like having a personal assistant to send out messages to students at the right time that go out from you. Um, what we're looking at here is a set of recommendations. Um, so Waymaker is watching behind the scenes. And when there are students who are really, they're working through the material, they're doing the stuff we want to do, but when they take a graded quiz, they're not scoring well on that quiz, there's a flag. Um, so what Waymaker does is it will tell you when there's a student, if you've got, uh, uh, if you have a student who's taken their first graded quiz, and in Waymaker courses, what's built in are two graded quizzes, uh, or two attempts at each quiz. And so students have the first attempt, they can get their feedback, the results, they can go back and study some more, and then they can take it a second time and hopefully improve their score. Um, and so what this is, a set of flags that will come to you as the instructor when a student has taken their first quiz attempt. They've also been doing at least a quarter of those little self-check formative assessments that we were looking at, where students have the opportunity to go in and practice and see if they're learning the material. So if they're doing at least a quarter of those, we know they're spending some time in the material. That's what we want. Um, and, but they, they have that we've, what we're considering the mastery level, and, and you as an instructor get to set what that is. Um, but then, the, so this is a list of students in, in this case who've done their first quiz score, and they haven't achieved mastery, but we know they're working through the material they're trying. So I'm going to look first at Daniel. He only got a 60 on his first quiz score. If I, if I click on it, I can see his quiz history. So it looks like he does pretty well. He's getting 80s, 85s. Um, in the past, uh, but this one's a 60 and it's pretty low and it looks like he's been, you know, falling off a little bit. So I think that that makes sense to reach out to Daniel. And so if I click on this message button, if I click there, then it automatically brings up a message. Um, I've told the system what email address I want to use. Um, and this is a little template that you have the opportunity to set up early uh, in your course. Um, and so it'll read in whatever wording you put in there. There's a, a default set of wording that's in there. It will also read in from Daniel's quiz, what are the learning outcomes that he's struggling with? And so there's this little message and it has an invitation. Uh, would you like to come in and talk to me? If you're teaching an online session, you might suggest a Skype, uh, a Skype appointment or, or a, you know, an online office hours call. Um, so it's an invitation to him to highlight to him, I know that you're struggling. I want to help you in these areas. And let's set something up so I can help you. And when you hit send the message, it goes out. His name falls off of the list. Um, and then you have the option to decide if you want to reach out to the others as well. So that can be a real time-saving thing for you. And it can be a real benefit to the student to know, one, someone's looking over their shoulder and is there to help them. Um, and two, highlighting we know the areas that you're struggling. And, um, and for a lot of students, especially when they're struggling, um, they may, may or may not be inclined to reach out proactively to an instructor and say, I need some help. We know a lot of students don't feel comfortable doing that. And so this gives you that quick ability to take the initiative. And, and students more often um, are willing to come in and get help when the instructor is taking that initiative to help them out. Now, the other thing that I'll show you very quickly are the automated messages. And to do that, I'm going to go through the setup communication process up here. If you click on Configure Waymaker, this, this walks through the process, but it's a nice place to, to show you what those um, completely automated messages look like. So the, this is a little wizard tool. It takes uh, uh, maybe 10 minutes total to go through the whole process, but you tell it what's your signature going to be, what email address do you want to use, What's that mastery threshold where the system says, above this level, the student's doing fine. Below this level, they're struggling. 80% is a good default. You can tell the system what are the course uh, start and end dates so it knows when to be sending and monitoring what's going on here. And then um, you have the opportunity to pick a message personality. This is just which set of default messages do you want to start with um, that might be closest to your own voice. There's a coach messaging. Uh, personality that's got a lot of positive reinforcement, a lot of exclamation points, um, that, that sort of positive tone. And then there's an advisor, just cut to the chase type uh, voice, and either of those can work just fine. One or the other may be more close to your, um, your authentic um, option or your authentic voice. 
Um, then you have the opportunity to customize and select the automated messages you want to use. Here um, in Waymaker now, we have two different types of automated messages. And these are messages that the system just watches the student's behavior, it watches their performance, and then it periodically will just automatically send out a message from you to the student um, that's pertinent to what it's seeing. The first of these messages is a study tips message, where if a student has done a quiz, they haven't done well on it, and they also are just not using the, the, the form of assessment. So they're, they're not, uh, they're probably just not putting enough time into it and enough attention. So this is just a little reminder email that says, hey, um, I give you another chance on each, uh, on each quiz. I see that you haven't been using the self-check. So before you take your next quiz, please review those, the course material and use those self-checks because I know you can do better. Um, so it's just that little kind of metacognitive nudge for students, um, and it reminds them also someone's looking over my shoulder, someone's keeping an eye on what I'm doing and giving me some tips so I can perform better. Then the second one is just a really, really simple nice work message. So when a student scores at that mastery threshold or higher, um, it sends out a, a message that acknowledges that and says, good job or well done. Um, it just notes, I saw you got a good score on that quiz, well done. Um, and for both of these, one of the things that's been interesting since we implemented this is seeing that although these take no time other than this quick setup process uh, for instructors at the very beginning of the term, students really respond well to these messages. They, they find it's really helpful. Um, they very often will write back and say, hey, that message meant so much to me, or you're right, I've, I've had a lot of work hours this week and I haven't had the time to put in. You know, those kinds of things that help further build and deepen that relationship between the student and the instructor. And in Waymaker courses, we're finding really encouraging, really promising results around um, being able to eliminate the performance gap between Pell eligible and non Pell eligible students when they're using Waymaker. Um, and also some really nice things around um, the number of students who are enrolled on the first day of class and the number who are passing on the last day of class. Um, fewer students are withdrawing from Waymaker courses, they're, they're staying with it. And we think a lot of that has to do with the power of these messaging tools and that, um, that kind of that bond that it starts to build, that somebody cares and somebody's there for me. So uh, that's the quick dash through the messaging tools, but they are really cool and really powerful. And, uh, and so if this looks like something that's, that's then we certainly would encourage you to take a look at the Waymaker version of any of the courses. You also have the ability to play around with it and, and um, see if it's something that you want to use for any of these courses. And so uh, if you want to have that opportunity, you're welcome to just request that. We would, we'd love to help you with that. Great. So uh, on the screen right now is just kind of a recap of some of the things that you talked us through today. And thank you again, Julie, for being here to walk through all of these things. So in addition to the Waymaker and Candela course materials that we saw for these three different levels of developmental English and all the way through English Comp, just know that we do also have Candela, those e-text replacements for Comp 2, American Lit 1 and 2. Um, English literature, and then also technical writing. And those supplemental resources listed down at the bottom, those are things that can fold nicely into any of these courses, just depending upon how you're teaching the course. So that said, um, just a quick thanks on behalf of uh, Julie, myself, and the rest of the team here at Lumen. Thanks to everyone for being here today and to VCCS for helping us do these webinars and giving us this opportunity to connect.